Hi everyone, my name is Robin Speziali and I'm the national best-selling author of a book called Market Masters. So if you, um, if you scour my YouTube channel, you'll find a lot of videos on Peter Lynch. He's one of my favorite investors. He's one of the best growth investors ever. Um, having run the Magellan Fund at Fidelity and over a 13 year period of running the fund, Peter Lynch posted a 29% annualized uh, rate of return. And you know many investors uh, you know, shoot for the moon but uh, he did it consistently over time uh, where you know most fund managers, I think 80% or even higher, can't even beat the S&P 500. Um, so you know, I've, I've quoted a lot of Peter Lynch in my videos, but um, this is another one where uh, Peter Lynch wrote what he called 25 golden rules for investing. And you can find these 25 golden rules for investing in Peter Lynch's book, Beating the Street. So I'm gonna be running down you know, rule number one all the way through rule 25. Um, I assume they're not in rank order. They all have equal importance, but here it goes. So rule number one, Peter Lynch says, investing is fun and exciting, but dangerous if you don't do any work. Rule number two, your investor's edge is not something you get from Wall Street experts. It's something you already have. You can outperform the experts if you use your edge by investing in companies or industries you already understand. Rule three, over the past three decades, the stock market has come to be dominated by a herd of professional investors. Contrary to popular belief, this makes it easier for the amateur investor. You can beat the market by ignoring the herd. Rule number four, behind every stock is a company. Finding out what it's, find out what it's doing. Rule number five, often there is no correlation between the success of a company's operations and the success of its stock over just a few months or even a few years. In the long run, there is a 100% correlation between the success of the company and the success of its stock. This disparity is the key to making money. It pays to be patient and to own successful companies. Rule six, you have to know what you own and why you own it. This baby is a cinch to go up, doesn't count. Rule seven, Peter Lynch says, long shots almost always miss the mark. Rule eight, owning stocks is like having children. Don't get involved in more than you can handle. Um, Peter Lynch has a sense of humor, as you can tell. The part-time stock picker probably has time to follow maybe eight to 12 companies and to buy and sell shares as conditions warrant. Um, there don't have to be more than five companies in the portfolio at one, any one time. Now, I don't really agree with this uh, so much. I, I, I think that you know five is a little bit uh, too low. You need to you know achieve um, some level of diversification which in my mind is you know, close to about 15 to 20, 25 stocks. So rule nine, Peter Lynch says in his golden rules of investing uh, and beating the street book, he says, if you can't find any companies that you think are attractive, put your money in the bank until you discover some. Rule 10, never invest in a company without understanding its finances. The biggest losses in stocks come from companies with poor balance sheets. Always look at the balance sheet to see if a company is solvent before you risk your money on it. Rule 11, avoid hot stocks and hot industries. Great companies and cold non-growth industries are consistent big winners. Rule 12, with small companies, you're better off to wait until they turn a profit before you invest. And uh, as an aside, this is why it's very important to keep a watch list. Rule 13, if you are thinking of investing in a troubled industry, buy the companies with staying power. Also, wait for the industry to show signs of revival. Buggy whips and radio tubes were troubled industries that never came back. Rule 14, if you invest $1,000 in a stock, all you can lose is $1,000, but you stand to gain $10,000 or even $50,000 over time if you are patient. The average person can concentrate on a few good companies while the fund manager is forced to diversify. By owning too many stocks, you lose this advantage of concentration. It only takes a handful of big winners to make a lifetime of investing worthwhile. Rule 15, in every industry and every region of the country, the observant amateur can find great growth companies long before the professionals have discovered them. Rule 16, Peter Lynch says, a stock market decline is as routine as a January blizzard in Colorado. If you are prepared, it can't hurt you. A decline is a great opportunity to pick up bargains left behind by investors who are fleeing the storm in panic. Rule 17, Everyone has the brain power to make money in stocks, but not everyone has the stomach. If you are susceptible to selling everything in a panic, you ought to avoid stocks and stock mutual funds altogether. And Peter Lynch says in his 25 golden rules of investing from his book, Beating the Street, 
Rule 18, there is always something to worry about. Avoid weekend thinking and ignore the latest dire predictions of the newscasters. Sell a stock because the company's fundamentals deteriorate, not because the sky is falling. Rule 19, nobody can predict interest rates, the future direction of the economy or the stock market. Dismiss all such forecasts and concentrate on what's actually happening to the companies in which you have invested. Rule 20, if you study 10 companies, you'll find one for which the story is better than expected. If you study 50 though, you'll find five. There are always pleasant surprises to be found in the stock market, companies whose achievements are being overlooked on Wall Street. Rule 21, if you don't study any companies, you have the same success buying stocks as you do in a poker game if you bet without looking at your cards. Rule 22, time is on your side when you own shares of superior companies. You can often afford to be patient even if you missed Walmart in the first five years. It was a great stock to own in the next five years too. Time is against you when you own options though. Rule 23, if you have the stomach for stocks but neither the time nor the inclination to do the homework, invest in equity mutual funds. And today you can invest easily in these index or equity ETFs, um, which charge a, a much lower um, commission rate. Here, it's a good idea to diversify. You should own a few different kinds of funds with managers who pursue different styles of investing, growth, value, small companies, large companies, etc. Investing this, uh, the six of the same kind of fund is not diversification. Rule 24, among the major stock markets of the world, the U.S. market ranks eighth in total return of the past decade, and this may have changed today since this is a pretty old book. You can take advantage of the faster growing economies by investing some portion of your assets in an overseas fund with a good record. And finally, um, rule number 25, and these are Peter Lynch's 25 golden rules of investing is found in his book, Beating the Street. Peter Lynch says, in the long run, a portfolio of well-chosen stocks and or equity mutual funds will always outperform a portfolio of bonds or a money market account. In the long run, a portfolio of poorly chosen stocks won't outperform the money left under the mattress. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed um, these 25 golden rules on investing by Peter Lynch. Definitely pick up his book, One Up on Wall Street, and the book here, which is Beating the Street. Um, he's one of the best investors to learn from, and he has a very simplistic uh, approach to growth investing. If you have any questions for me, guys, just email me at r.speziali at gmail.com or check out my website at robinspeziali.com. Thanks and happy investing.